It was like a surreal open house. The FBI had finished searching, so the landlord allowed media and neighbors into the home of Syed Farouk and Tashfin Malik. In one bedroom, prayer books, a bed strewn with photos. In the other bedroom, a crib, a box filled with baby shoes. A picture of a happy family, but in the living room, a different story. Next to the shards of broken glass and children's toys, the FBI left behind lists of items seized from the home, box after box of various types of ammunition and gun parts. The landlord says the suspects were just like any other young professional couple. No problems, no red flags. Nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. They were good tenants, paid their rent on time, no complaints, anything. Certainly no sign they were planning an act of terrorism, because that is now what the FBI is calling it. Based on the information and the, and the facts as we know them, we are now investigating these horrific acts as an act of terrorism. Here's the first picture we've seen of Tashfin Malik. The FBI confirmed that on the day of the attack, she pledged allegiance to ISIS on Facebook. The FBI say they weren't on a watch list, but the couple did talk to radical Islamists who were being investigated. They say the couple tried to erase their digital footprints and police found their cell phones crushed in a trash can. We have retained those cell phones and we do continue to exploit the data from those cell phones. We do hope that the digital fingerprints that were left by these two individuals will take us towards their motivation. Police say there's a possibility the couple had planned another attack, but there's no evidence now of any ongoing threat, nor that they belonged to an organization. The lawyer for the Farouk's family claimed there's no evidence of terrorism. He said Farouk's mother, who lived with the couple, had no idea what her son was planning. She's been crying all these past couple days. She hates what happened. She. She, she's very mournful about over the victims. The victims, like Robert Adams, who left behind a 20-month-old daughter, 27-year-old Sierra Claiborne, known for her bright smile, and Benata Betbadal, a mother of three from Iran, who fled religious extremism. I prayed this morning for those victims. In San Bernardino today, side by side, ministers, rabbis, and imams. This is a call for us, soberly, to all of us, to just pursue our faith with all our heart even more because of this incident, right? Residents of all faiths standing together against everything the shooters believed. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, San Bernardino.